he has been at the forefront of for Tibet in the European Parliament. During his chairmanship, there has been many, many hearings introducing passing resolutions in the European Parliament. And Mr. Mann's dedication and continuous support were remarkable. And we can say that Thomas is one of our pillars in the European Parliament. The Tibet group was the Tibet intergroup was in, in 1989, celebrated in 1989. In 2014, it was really both a Tibet interest group, but interest group continues to be the key partner for Tibet and Tibet issue in the European Parliament. And I think what makes it special here is that Mr. Mann, his personal compassion, but also the passion for human rights and Tibetan people, in 1999, when I studied at International Campaign with Tibet in Europe, and Thomas was also setting up his position in the European Parliament, and I do recall that bringing a van full of young Tibetans from all over Europe, and beginning to start work in the European Parliament with Thomas and his staff, and distributing leaflets from these small, small children from 8 to 13 years, making sure that every delegation who entered the four different entrances here about Tibet. And that was 16 years ago. Thomas, we are very grateful that what you have been doing for Tibetan people. And I know that we can count on you. you can, we will always be on our side. No doubt about it, as you would very often say. Your interest in Tibetan culture is also very respectable. And I know that you have visited many times to Dhamsala and Tibetan communities, and most recent that you have been as a member of the Tibetan election missions. So I'm sure that you will speak about the report later during this conference. Thank you so much for being here today, and now I give you the floor. Thank you very much, Sherry. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, Venerable Holiness of the Lama, Dr. Luxang Sangha, the Sikyong, Kaysan Gyalsa, Special Envoy of His Holiness, Jan Poyman, Speaker of the Flemish Parliament, Dio Matteo Megacci, President of the International Campaign of Tibet, of course, Richard Pierre. He's a believer of the rain showers in Brussels last time. It was great. Ari Malos, the former President of the European Economic and Social Committee. And my colleague Christian Peda, he is the vice chair of the Human Rights Committee of the European Parliament. Your colleagues and members of the TBIS interest group in the European Parliament, the European Commission and the Council, and the members of the TBIS Office Brussels, of ICT, Vesavi de Tibet, Lights on Tibet, and all the supporters of the Tibetan people, dear Tibetans. Today, in the heart of Europe, we open the seventh international conference on the, of the Tibetan support groups. I'm happy to recognize how many people are here to contribute to this event and to raise their voice for the Tibetans around the world. This conference is one of the most effective platforms for support groups, for NGOs and parliamentarians to exchange views on human rights violations of the Tibetan plateau to adjust global protection for persecuting Tibetans and to coordinate international campaigns. It also is a good opportunity to send a strong signal towards the Chinese government. It's a great honor that His Holiness the Dalai Lama is taking part of this conference. He will also visit Paris and Strasbourg next week. People around the world, including the European Union, they are inspired by His Holiness. He raises awareness for the Tibetan case with a unique aura and charisma. His remarkable messages, his outstanding intellectuality. At the same time, he is always very close to all human beings. 
The Tibet Interest Group in the European Parliament raises awareness for the Tibetan people who are chased, suppressed, and suffering in their home country. Since 15 years, I am privileged to be the leader of parliamentarians who support the middle way approach. We believe in the document of utmost relevance, the memorandum of genuine autonomy for Tibetan people. We still demand the nomination of a special representative on Tibetan affairs as member of the European External Action Service. For our regular monthly meetings, we invite high-ranking experts from all over the world, from the Tibetan prisoners, monks and nuns, and writers, scientists, journalists. They all inform about uh, the political situation, the deficits of human rights, and the unacceptable living conditions. Some of our islands. In March 2013, our guests were Kurti Rinpoche from the Kurti Monastery in Tibet, and high-ranking members of the Tibetan Exile Parliament. In June 2013, a conference on the Tibetan environment issue took place here in Brussels. The topic was denuding, degrading and depopulation in the Tibetan plateau. It has been an impact to the world climate with one of the largest glaciers landscape worldwide and the sources of the six biggest Asian rivers. By the way, another conference on this topic was organized in November 2015 under the title Environmental Degradation of the Third Pole. In October 2014, we welcomed Lopsam Sankai for our 101st Tibet Intergroup meeting. In June 2015, the Dalai Lama celebrated his 80th birthday. With my colleague Shara Soba, we organized an exhibition in the European Parliament. One week in Brussels and one week in Strasbourg. Um, we called it Ways of Wisdom, in reference to the path of His Holiness. More than 350 visitors joined the event in Brussels. Three days we had a Buddhist Sant Mandala drawn by a Tibetan monk. In December 2015, the European Parliament passed an initiative report on the relationship between European Union and China. We succeeded in integrating several important chapters with a big majority in the European Parliament. The status of the Tibetan autonomous region, the re-establishment of the dialogue between China and the Tibetan Parliament in exile, environmental damages and resource exploitation, the suppression of Buddhist religion and the ban of the portrait of His Holiness, and the Chinese terrorist laws which legalizes violations of rights by government forces against so-called potential terrorists and declares self-immolations as an act of terrorism. And of course, the travel restriction for EU citizens to visit Tibet. Big majority of the European Parliament. In March 2016, like every year, we celebrated the anniversary of the Tibetan Uprising Day. We, as a members of the European Parliament, we participated in a big demonstration and a march from the European Commission to the Chinese Embassy in Brussels. It was a strong signal of European solidarity. In March of this year, I was a member of the International Election Observing Mission to Dharamsala. Together with parliamentarians from US, from Canada, some of them are available here, Australia, France and the United Kingdom, as well as the ICT chair, Matteo Bencacci, who spent one week in the political capital of the Tibetans. I want to express my gratitude to everyone who took part in this political process and to make it possible that Tibetans all over the world have the opportunity to vote for their representatives. The Tibetans hold their elections democratically, professionally, and with great passion. We visited schools, contacted local NGOs, had severe talks with women and youth organizations and human rights activists. A personal highlight for the private audience, our team, uh, with this one In April, we raised awareness to the case of the missing Panchen Lama. He has been kidnapped since more than 20 years. For his 27th birthday, 
We publish press statements and videos addressing also the Chinese government and demanding this release. And in July this year, we appeal to the European Commission, the European Council and the Presidency of the European Parliament to emphasize the importance of the Tibetan issue during the talks with Chinese authorities. And we received positive reactions by the High Representative, Madame Mogherini, and we were assured that the heads of European institutions frequently mention Tibet towards the Chinese. To summarize, the Tibetans are frequently supported by the European Union and of course by the European Parliament. Even against resistance, we do not leave Tibet alone. Your culture, your language, your religion, your identity. So today we stand again shoulder to shoulder with our Tibetan friends. Tashi